Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Um, weather's turned a bit for the worst this weekend, so I doubt we're going to be, <coughs> excuse me, getting out flying. Um, so we're going to be getting on with doing some stuff in the garage. Today, um, a friend of mine who I fly with dropped this uh, Watt 4 XL off here for me to do a bit of work on for him. He was struggling with the, getting the, the throttle linkage to work. Um, Engines are CCRC or CRC or whatever they are, 26. The engine is fine as far as we can tell. I have run it up previously. Um, it's brand new so it's going to need running in. But we couldn't get linear response on the throttle. So on a bit more investigation, the throttle linkage looked like an S shape going through the fuselage. And it wasn't, it was tight and then it was loose and it was tight and it was loose in all different places from the engine all the way back to the servo. So I said to the chap, I said, look, leave it here. I'll strip it out. I'll start from scratch, um, get the throttle linkage working, and we can go from there, get the rest of the model finished. It's, it's not far finished, but it's his first petrol powered model. So he wants to get it right. Um, it basically, just now needs the throttle linkage uh, Bowden cable supported you know, with bolts of blocks and things like that so it doesn't move it needs a couple of switches put into it and it needs the battery secured in other than that it's ready to, for a test flight as far as i'm aware um, the problem we had was with this particular engine it comes with these aluminium t-mounts i don't think you'll be able to see them at all in there you can just see them these aluminium t-mounts in here which is a good idea it makes the engine bolt straight onto a firewall but it doesn't give you much space. The carb is on the back of the engine, it's a re-induction engine. So the carb's on the back, which means the throttle linkage is all tight and your choke linkage is all tight and the fuel inlet is all tight in the bottom here. So what we had to do was put a hole just on the inside at the bottom, you might be able to see it at the end of my finger, just on the inside of the mount here and run a, a Bowden cable straight back to the servo. Um, so it's on a pull. These carbs, I'm sure you're aware if you fly a petrol model, most of these carbs have got a spring return on them so that it goes back to a default setting with no control linkage. It goes back to an idle or shutdown depending on how you've got the, the idle screws set up. Personally, I take all the idle screws out because they're more hassle than they're worth. Other people have got different opinions on that. So if the throttle link fails the engine should go to a stop or an idle position um, previously having had a throttle servo fail in a half open position and then another situation where the actual link snapped and the throttle didn't return it was a bit of a problem to get the not uh, to get the model back on the ground safely so now i have all the springs and throttle linkages set so that if the linkage fails it goes back to a stop it fully closes the butterfly um so yeah that's what i've been doing on this one it's as i say it's just about ready now to be returned to the guy um he can do all the other finishing off bits and pieces simple choke mechanism there's no server on that it just comes back to a bell crank in the middle of here and there's going to be a pull wire on this side so that pull out is choke on and push back in is choke off for flying uh, there's going to be a couple of um, switches mounted on the outside and then as far as I'm aware it's, it's ready to go. Engine is going to need running in, it's, it's, it's brand new, it's going to need tweaked um, but for the first model, it's, it's a model that I'd recommend to people as their first petrol engine because you don't have to worry about the aeroplane. We, we all know that this design of aeroplane, the Watt 4, it's a classic that was built in, night, first built in 1970 something, 76 I think, um, by Chris Foss and it's been produced in various, various different incarnations since. Um, I've got in the workshop here just now I've got one, two, three, four, four watt fours alone and I've got one, two, three acro watts, all FOSS designs, sorry six watt fours including this one but it's not mine. Um, so it's a great design and it's evolved over the years so if you haven't flown one which i'd be surprised um get yourself one they go the foamies up here you might be able to see it 
We've got a foamy water four. We've got a standard size for a 46-ish, 52 size two-stroke. We've got this one, which is, a, I'd say, the smaller one for the petrols, which is from, I fly mine, which is in the loft on a 20, DLE 20. This one's got 26 in it. I have seen them with DLE 30s in them, but they're overpowered. And then you've got the next bigger one than this, which is a 50cc size. So they're very versatile. Um, and you don't have to worry about the airplane. Everybody knows they're going to fly well. They're used as a flying test bed, which I think what this one's going to be used for. It's going to be used to get the guy into flying petrol models um, and used to dealing with this end as opposed to having to deal with the model. So, so yeah, that's what we've done this morning. A couple of hours messing around with that. Um, I've got another model over there, which I'm working on. Um, along the same sort of lines of this, but sort of slightly different, um, which I'm desperate to get finished. Um, hopefully, looking out the window, I don't think the weather's going to clear today to get out of the field. Um, so I might as well just carry on, pot around here, and uh, come back to you once I've done some more bits. So catch you again soon.